In the previous class, we learned how to do uh, analysis of circuits with uh, phasors. Phasors are these complex multiples of exponential j omega t, and from that you can get the sinusoidal steady state response. Okay, so I looked all nice and simple compared to solving differential equations, but we did run into a problem with this particular uh, circuit, right? So we calculated it in the time domain. We got something and we calculated using phasors and we got something else. So, what is the reason? In fact, uh, depending on the input, sometimes it works, sometimes it does not work. It is pretty horrible actually. So why does this happen? Okay, what is the answer we are getting using phasors? Huh? What is the answer? J. Srinath? Yes. What is the question? Then we will get to the answer. What do we get when we calculate using the phasor technique? Hmm? No, I mean finally I want answers in the time domain, right? I want the voltages as a function of t. That of course this phasor way is some shortcut way of uh, doing the same thing. So what is the time domain I voltage I get when I solve this circuit using the phasor technique? What am I getting? It is all on the board, right? Should I tell you which color it is in? It is in blue. What is the answer I am getting using phasors? Minus? Minus cos omega t. Okay, and what is the answer I get from direct time domain calculation, which we know cannot be wrong, right? Because that's the basic IV relationship. What is that? One minus cos omega t. So what has gone wrong here? We get something there, and we get something here. Huh? No, that's okay. I mean, in the other case, we got it right. So this phasor analysis is useless. I mean, depending on the initial condition. No, that's right. I mean, shifting of origin. I mean, this is not. Uh, quiz right I mean oh I just shifted the origin give me half a mark no that is not the case this is wrong <laughs> okay <laughs> huh? it is wrong it is different is not it the whole point of using phasor analysis was at least under some circumstances it should give you guaranteed right answer okay so it is giving wrong answer why is it giving the wrong answer have we gone wrong somewhere So, so we cannot use it for reactive uh, elements. Is that the conclusion? I mean, at least when we came up with the method, there seemed to be no such restriction. Hmm? Yeah, what's going on? What is this analysis called? We had another name for it. What? Steady state? Sinusoidal steady state. So is it sinusoidal? No? It is, right? The excitation is sinusoidal. Is it steady state? It is not. Why not? Oh, no current through a capacitor in steady state is for DC excitation, right? If you have sinusoids, you can very much have current through a capacitor, you will. But there is some subtle issue here. What is the time constant of the circuit? Huh? Zero, why? How do you find the time constant of a first order circuit? You find the resistance across the capacitor. So what is the resistance? Yes. What's your name? Huh? Ah, what's your uh, what's the uh, what's the resistance across the capacitor? I don't know. What is inside the current source? What is, what is the thevenin resistance across the capacitor in the circuit? 
come on infinity okay so what is the time constant of the circuit infinity so when does it reach steady state never okay so this is a simple example where you have a natural response plus steady state response the steady state response is identified correctly the natural response never dies out okay so this is just to illustrate that this applies only to the steady state part of it now you have any resistance across this it's okay it doesn't matter any finite valued resistance or and you calculate the steady state the natural response will die out okay and in this particular case the natural response doesn't die out so the total response that you calculate includes the natural response which hasn't died that's why the answer from phasor analysis which is calculating only the sinusoidal steady state part doesn't match with this one okay but once you have some resistance or basically any circuit in which the natural response dies out this is still useful because you have to wait long enough for it to die out but once it dies out the total response equals the steady state response okay so actually lots of circuits are like that but this is just to illustrate some subtleties that may be behind the analysis yes no now what happens is the natural response you know that the coefficient of the natural response depends on the forcing function okay you are talking about the case where i excited it with cosine instead of sine right so it just so happens that for that the coefficient of the natural response is zero okay if i if i take any other phase let's say some phi you will get some other value here i think instead of 1 you will get some cos phi or something like that so you can always choose the input so that the coefficients of the natural responses are zero okay so in that case i mean the natural response essentially you can say dies out i mean or it's not even there from the beginning but that's a very special case i mean that doesn't happen for arbitrary inputs okay so this circuit is basically some pathological circuit in which Uh, the time constant is infinity and the natural response never dies out similarly if you analyze a, analyze an inductor with a sinusoidal voltage source across it you will get the same answer similar behavior okay so all this is to just uh, drive home the point that what we are calculating using the phasor method is the steady state response for stable circuits after you wait a long time the total response equals the steady state response so it is quite useful but you can always run into circuits where the natural response doesn't die out like in this case it's it persists right that one it stays constant forever or even worse there are some unstable circuits where it blows up okay any questions about anything we did this far so you had already learned phasor analysis before this course right where for j Did you have those questions in the exam? No. Oh, okay. <clears throat> Now, uh, this phasor analysis, as you can see, is extremely convenient. Although I said that uh, there are some cases where it doesn't apply. For the cases where it does apply, I mean, instead of solving a differential equation, you are solving an algebraic equation. It can't get any better than that. Okay. And we saw that we could uh, set up the uh, nodal analysis or any of the analysis methods we used for. resistive circuits now we can use here also except that there we always had for any resistor we had uh, positive coefficients or maybe you can even solve resistors with uh, negative resistances but the point is v by i was some constant number now also v by i is a constant number which can be complex that's all okay so as long as you know how to manipulate complex numbers you can do the sinusoidal steady state analysis using phasors very easily now the other restriction of course is that all the excitation should be at the same frequency but if you do have excitations at multiple frequencies it's not a big deal i mean you can do it one frequency after another and superpose the time domain results okay but keep in mind that what you get out of this is only the steady state response not the natural response okay so what is the frequency of the change of frequency of change of changing with time okay that we don't uh, deal with here because uh, what do i mean you're thinking of let's say a source that is at 1 kilohertz for one minute and maybe in the next minute it's 2 kilohertz that's not easy to analyze with this okay uh, first of all you can't use phasors for this one what you can do is let's say your circuit reaches steady state well within that one minute you can compute the steady state part and then after that it goes to 2 kilohertz you compute the steady state part of that but what happens when it switches from 1 to 2 kilohertz you will get some natural response components that you can't predict with this anyway okay and actually i mean technically speaking such a source 
if a source has a, something like this, let us say after this it becomes higher frequency. This is not a sinusoidal source at all, okay. This is some other complicated source, right. So, a sinusoidal source by definition means that it maintains the same frequency from minus infinity to infinity, okay. So, that way I mean it does not apply, but you can apply in some uh, once you are familiar enough with it, let us say the, the this part is steady state and this part is natural response, you can find the response in this part using phasor analysis, okay. And then again for some more time you cannot calculate because there will be some natural response, but after that you can calculate the steady state for this frequency and so on, okay. So, you can approximate it, but a source whose frequency is changing is not really a sinusoidal source, whereas all the techniques, the all the discussions we had applies only to a purely sinusoidal source, okay. Any other questions? Okay, so now let us go back to our uh, simple circuit. Okay, and let us say here I apply Vp angle 0. What this really means is in the time domain I have applied Vp cos omega t. Okay. So now uh, what is Vr and what is Vc? What is Vr? Yeah, so this is R by J omega C times Vp, which is the same as J omega Cr by 1 plus J omega Cr times Vp, okay. And this Vc is the complement of that, which is basically. Okay. So now at any given frequency, Vr and Vc are some complex numbers and just like you uh, sometimes represent complex numbers as vectors in the two dimensional plane, you can do the same here. You can represent phasors in the two dimensional plane and such a diagram is known as a phasor diagram. Okay. Phasor diagram is just a picture of phasors in the uh, xy plane, okay, where the x axis is the real part and y axis is the imaginary part, okay. Now, from this, I am assuming that you are uh, quite familiar with uh, calculating the, I mean, going between different representations of complex numbers between. Uh, rectangular and polar forms and also rationalizing complex numbers when the denominator is complex etc etc okay so i won't go into any of that so this is the real part and this is the imaginary part and i have to take some frequency okay so first of all let me take omega equal to 0 what will the phasors look like and let me call the source voltage as vs okay so, so clearly vs should be Vr plus Vc in this circuit, okay. At omega equal to 0, what will the phasor diagram look like of uh, Vs, Vr and Vc? What is the phasor corresponding to the source voltage Vs? Mayug, Mayug, yeah. What is the phasor corresponding to the source voltage Vs? on the real axis, what is the length? Vp, okay. So, this is Vs where this point is Vp, okay. And at omega equal to 0, what is the phasor corresponding to Vr? What is it? At omega equal to 0, what is the phasor corresponding to Vr? <coughs> On the real axis, what is the length? Vp. 0, right? I mean that you can see from the expression here, right? It is proportional to omega. At uh, 
what it means is that at zero frequency which is dc what is the steady state current zero so there is no voltage dropped across the resistor okay so vr would be just zero and vc vc equals vp okay obviously it has to be that's also vp okay and in general if the frequencies are very low okay first of all let me take another frequency omega equals 1 by rc okay what happens in this case hmm sai satvik not here yeah so what are the phasers vs of course is the same because i have not changed the applied voltage so vs will be this what are the phasers vr and vc ha huh? louder vr is on the real axis at omega equal to 1 by rc what is the value of this at omega equal to 1 by rc j by 1 plus j so where is that uh, vector on the complex plane what is it is which way upwards or downwards upwards upwards 45 degrees are you sure yeah what is the angle of that j by 1 plus j so the angle of the numerator is pi by 2 and the angle of denominator is pi by 4 so the angle is plus pi by 4 okay and we are as and what is the magnitude of this so the length of this is basically vp by square root of 2 okay so the real part is vp by 2 and the imaginary part is also vp by 2 okay and what about vc deepak yeah for the values yeah so it will look like this and this also is 45 degrees so the angle is 1 by 1 plus j right so the angle of the numerator is 0 the angle of the denominator is pi by 4 so 0 minus pi by 4 minus pi by 4 and the real part is uh, vp by 2 and the imaginary part is minus vp by 2 and obviously these two should add up to vs right vr plus vc equals vs sit down sit down okay this is fine so at omega equal to 1 by rc the magnitude of voltages across the capacitor and resistor are equal to each other but of course they will be 90 degrees out of phase of each other okay now what do you think happens for a low frequency by low frequency whenever i have any uh quantity with dimension i have to say low compared to what so let's say omega much less than 1 by rc but not zero okay what will the picture look like what is the phasor vr hmm kartik jaychandra yes omega very small like much smaller than 1 by rc but not zero so approximately what's the angle of the phasor Ten to zero. Why? Ten 
It's like fuck. Huh? What will tend to zero? No, no. The magnitude of V R is of course very small because J times omega C R is very small, and the denominator, the magnitude is almost one, right? One plus J omega C R. But what's the angle of this? Angle will be zero. Pi by two, right? It will be almost perpendicular to. We have J times some small number divided by one plus J times some small number. So the angle of this complex number is almost zero degrees. The angle of this is 90 degrees. Okay, so it's almost 90, but will it be more than 90 or less than 90? Slightly less than 90. Okay, so I will show it as some small uh, thing like this. It's almost 90 degrees, but uh, not quite 90. Okay, it will certainly be less than 90. And we see, we see. What's the magnitude of VC? It will be almost VP, okay, because this omega CR is very small, so the magnitude of the denominator is almost 1. And what is the angle of this? Nearly 0. But is it negative? Is it in the first quadrant or the fourth quadrant? Fourth quadrant, okay. Okay, and of course, these should always add up to this one. Okay, so what happens is that if you start with zero frequency, the voltage across the resistor is zero, and all of the input voltage is across the capacitor. That is, if you apply a DC voltage, as you increase the frequency of the sinusoid, there will be some current flowing through the capacitor. Okay, the current is very small, so the voltage drop across the resistor is still quite small. But uh, it is there nonetheless, and uh, almost all of the voltage is still across the capacitor, right? And also, uh, the voltage across the resistor and capacitor in this particular case will always be at 90 degrees to each other, right? Because the current in the capacitor and the voltage across the capacitor are 90 degrees apart, which is leading. Which one is leading? Leading meaning whichever is. Uh, more counterclockwise. VC, right? So, angle of IC is angle of VC plus 90 degrees. Okay. So, the current leads the voltage by 90 degrees. I think this fact you probably knew even from high school or something. So, so now. Uh, the voltage across the resistor is like the is the current in the capacitor scaled by some number okay so this is leading that by 90 degrees okay but the magnitude is very small now as you go on increasing the frequency what happens is that the resistor phasor rotates uh, counterclockwise and also its magnitude goes on increasing the capacitor phasor also rotates counterclockwise but its magnitude goes on decreasing okay so now you should be able to quickly tell me what happens at a very high frequency and again high frequency meaning omega much more than 1 by rc this 1 by rc is some characteristic frequency of this right this network because you see that it's omega times cr that matters whether omega times cr is much more than 1 or much less than 1 tells you the behavior of each of these phases okay yeah there's some question which one we are Oh, okay. So the this numerator is 90 degrees. The denominator is some small angle. So it's 90 minus some small angle. That's all. Okay. So omega much greater than 1 by RC. Mahesh Kumar. Yeah. Okay. About which point? About which uh, plane? Okay. So that's correct. So this is Vs, and Vc will be almost minus 90 degrees, but a very small magnitude. And Vr would be almost zero degrees, and magnitude almost equal to Pp. And of course, the sum will be Vs. Okay. Now what happens is at very high frequencies, the capacitor is almost a short circuit, right? So almost all of the applied voltage appears across the resistor. That's what this is saying. 
okay so you can de determine the same thing in many ways the impedance of the capacitor and the impedance of the resistor uh, it's basically an impedance divider right just like a resistive divider at omega equal to 1 by rc what is the impedance of the capacitor it's j times r it's the same magnitude as the resistor but 90 degrees with a 90 degree phase shift now at very high frequencies that is omega much more than 1 by rc the impedance of the uh, capacitor is much smaller than the impedance of the resistor so all the voltages across the resistor similarly if when omega is much less than 1 by rc that is at very low frequencies the impedance of the capacitor is much higher than the impedance of the resistor so all voltages across the capacitor okay and these phasor diagrams are very useful to visualize phase relationships and also sometimes to do designs okay maybe you want to design circuits where you want a certain phase relationship between certain uh, quantities and so on okay now in the tutorial there are many more examples of this probably more complicated circuits but the principle is the same okay the phasor diagram is simply the representation of uh, uh, phasors on the complex plane the only thing is that uh, obviously our uh, voltages and currents obey Kirchhoff's voltage law and Kirchhoff's current law so if you have a number of uh, voltages around a loop they should form some closed uh, polygon right it, they should form a polygon and similarly if you have a number of uh, currents entering a node they should also form a polygon okay so that's all that's there to it. any questions about this drawing phasor diagrams okay first of all with phase i mean you can always claim that 90 degrees leading is 270 degrees lagging right so everything is modulo 360 degrees but uh, it's common to if you let's say you restrict your angles to plus or minus 180 in that range then this ic is this part you understand that's okay right so that means that if uh, you have the voltage waveform like this across the capacitor the current waveform maybe on a different scale would look like that okay so this sinusoid is leading the other sinusoid that's the and order i mean it's obvious from the angles the angle of uh, the current is 90 degrees more than the angle of the voltage so that's i mean that's what is referred to as leading angle okay but i mean if you call this 270 degrees lagging you won't be wrong okay and similarly no it's just a visual representation of uh, things that's all okay so i mean many times uh, there is the same advantage you have with drawing figures like to visualize phases between different voltages and so on so it's useful we'll see i mean we kind of expand this to some more stuff but uh, it's yeah what can i say i mean there are some applications where you would want to visualize uh, phases between different things and when we come to three phases you will see when we come to three phase systems it becomes quite uh, useful as well okay Suppose in some case we have uh, one voltage uh, on the imaginary axis and one voltage at the real axis. Yeah. So we say that the uh, voltage of the imaginary axis is leading at one by yeah, that's correct. Yeah. Can, can't we say that the uh, voltage of the real axis is leading by one by two? Yeah, you can. You can. But I mean, that's not what you normally say, right? I mean, you can certainly say that and you won't be wrong. But I mean, it's just contrary to convention, that's all. Because phase is modulo 360 degrees, right? Like if I say that uh, sin is cos of uh, sin theta is cos theta minus 90 degrees or cos theta plus 270 degrees, it's both correct. Okay. So one of them expresses uh, the feeling that or the statement that sin is lagging cos by 90 degrees. The other one says sin is leading cos by 270 degrees. They are both correct. But normally when you say leading or lagging, you restrict the angles you specify to plus minus 180 degrees. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's just from KVL. Yeah. Yeah. If you have two sources, can we say the same thing? No, no. I mean, certainly not. I mean, you have to that that rule applies to specific circuits, right? So, in the same circuit, yeah, you can. If you have another current source, VC plus VR still will still be VS because the loop is the same. But for arbitrary circuits, you may first of all have a lot more than two quantities. Okay. So, yeah. Why do we analyze this? Why do we check? No, you may want it in some cases. Okay. Now it's hard to explain it now. Again, when we come to three phase, we have a number of examples of this. Okay. Uh, you may want a certain phase relationship between two components. Now, when you come to let's say communication systems, you will have. Uh, have you heard of modulation? What is it? 
you multiply some low frequency signal with a high frequency carrier to translate it to high frequencies. So normally what you do is you also uh, translate, you have different versions of the low frequency signals, some uh, a 0 degree version and a plus 90 degree version and you multiply the 0 degree version with the cos and uh, plus 90 with a, a minus sign and so on and then you add them up. So in analyzing those systems, it is useful to know the phase relationship. It is in fact necessary to know the phase relationship between different parts of the system. Okay. Now obviously there is no more information in this diagram than in these expressions, but as they say the picture is worth a thousand words, maybe in this case only ten, but uh, <laughs> it is useful sometimes. Okay. So phasor diagram just drawing that, I mean this is what is involved. Okay, you may have a lot more complicated circuits. Last time we analyzed, we uh, had the, uh, I think the two node circuit with uh, two capacitors and an inductor. You can have phasor diagrams for different quantities and then uh, draw them. Obviously, these, uh, I mean, you would want to draw them. Uh, if you have currents and voltages, you should draw them on either di different diagrams or scale the uh, axis appropriately and so on. Okay. 